Good evening. I'm glad that you could join me tonight. We're in John chapter 15 this evening, and it's one of the dearest chapters in my heart. Uh, it was a verse, uh, John 15, 5, that was a memory verse when I went through experiencing God, and it really summarizes our need to be constantly dwelling in Christ Jesus if we want to do anything in this world that is uh, going to last. And we can do a lot of things, but a lot of things won't last into eternity. Those works will be burnt up, the Bible says. And only what survives the flames of fire will last into eternity. And so uh, Jesus, uh, after he had told them uh, about uh, being betrayed, he's in the last uh, verse of chapter 14, he said, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me a commandment, so I do, arise and let's go from here. He knew that the prince of this world was coming to get him and that he needed to go for one more moment with his disciples to teach them a little bit more and to pray to the Father before his time had come to go and be crucified. And so with that burden, he still uh, had the, the most amazing teaching for his disciples. Tonight he says, I, I am the vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it bind, abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. If a man abides in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. But apart, with, apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from Jesus, you can do nothing. But if you are bearing fruit, it says that the Father will prune you so that you bear more fruit. It doesn't feel good to be pruned. At times, things get cut away from us so that we can bear more fruit. It could be a TV show that you're watching that isn't causing you to have the right heart towards God, the right heart towards other people, that it's cut away from you. I have a TV in front of me here and I don't watch that TV that's in front of me, except in the morning, and guess what? I'm watching Charles Stanley and, and other ministers in the morning, and that's it. In the evening, I'm not turning it on at all. And if I watch anything on that TV, that is not a Christian program, I'm watching a movie with my daughter. An appropriate movie to watch with my daughter. Some movies we started to watch and discovered that they were not appropriate for us to be watching, and we picked something else out to watch. And so, my daughter knows my heart, my daughter knows how to pick out some amazing movies. I think that she uh, sometimes is given a little assistance by the Holy Spirit 
on which movies to pick up because we watch some very wholesome movies that have deep uh, meaning behind them. Uh, movies about forgiveness, uh, where restoration happens, and uh, and it's amazing the movies that her and I have watched over the last couple of years. Uh, and uh, I've been really since the uh, time that Sarah and Tommy were born, I've been a, a G-rated guy. And uh, I've only watched anything more intense than that uh, with my friend Brett. And we've watched some action thrillers, okay? Uh, but uh, we keep it clean. And uh, my cat's wanting to uh, see what's going on. And <laughs> maybe knock over the camera. But we need to be abiding in Jesus. We, we're living in him. Our life is found in him. Uh, if you look through the scripture, how many times does it say, in Christ Jesus, we uh, see in Christ Jesus all throughout the Gospels that we need to be in Christ Jesus. Uh, and apart from that, if we're not in Christ Jesus, the one who is crucified for our sin, then we're on our own. If we're in Christ Jesus, the one who has already died, then guess what? We've died with him. Because we're in him. As he is in the Father, we are in him through the Spirit that he has given us. That we become one with him through the Holy Spirit that he has given us. And... It's an amazing thing. And so, again, he says, If a man abides in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Uh, apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch, and is withered, and they are gathered, and they throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you're not bearing fruit, you're going to burn up. And we need to be bearing fruit for the kingdom. You know what Jesus said about, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. We need to be a witness about a relationship with Jesus. That's how we're going to be bearing fruit. And so, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. And so, you will be my disciples. As the Father loves me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Abide in the love of Jesus. If you keep my commandments. We talked about that three times. Three times yesterday. If you keep my commandments. You will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandments. And abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Now he's turning to our relationship with each other. First of all, our relationship with him, abide in him, abide in his love. Now we're supposed to love one another. And that's his commandment for us now. It wasn't one of the ten. This is number 11 now, okay? Greater love has no one than this, 
that he would lay down his life for his friends. Are you willing to be a sacrifice for your friends? Greater love has no one than that, that you would give up everything to save your friends. You give up everything to be a witness even unto death. If you watch my videos, I've said, I hope that my witness is such that I would be the most hated man in America uh, because that I will not deny Jesus. And that I want those that are leading our country that are not following God's righteous requirements, that are leading our country astray, that they will bring a curse on themselves and on their families instead of us. Because one way or another, breaking God's laws brings a curse. Killing our unborn babies brings a curse. Teaching children that it's all right to change your sex and to go following after same-sex relationships brings a curse. Uh, and that curse is destroying our nation. From the inside out, we're being destroyed. And our nation will be given away to a people that didn't cultivate its land, that didn't build its houses, just like the land that was given away to the children of Israel. Our land is being, being given away right now. But we can reclaim our land. Not by violence, but by loving the Lord. And so, greater love has no man than this, that he would lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. And I love, there's a song called, I'm a friend of God. And it's an amazing song because he calls us friends. For all things that I have heard from the Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me. This is pretty interesting. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. It's not going to get burned up. Eternal fruit that's going to remain. And whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give you. So we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. Yesterday, Jesus said, pray to him in his name. And he'll do it that the Father would be glorified. So they're both working. So you can pray to the Jesus in Jesus' name. And you can pray to the Father in Jesus' name. And they're both working. Jesus is sitting and interceding for us in heaven. And he's, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, but he also has a inner sanctum that he goes to that has the candlesticks. And, uh, and he says that he is lifting us up there continually. And uh, I've got a guest in the back here. And uh, so said whatever you ask in his name that he will give us and and these things I commanded you that you love one another and Jesus had already told us about the fact that there will be persecution from the world it says if the world hates you you know that it hated me first before it hated you if you were of the world the world would love you as its own yet because 
you are not of this world, but I chose you out of the world. Therefore, the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will per persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things I have said to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If they had not come, or if I had not come, and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. If I had not come and spoken to them, oh, excuse me, I'll, I'll say it again. If they had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which I had done, I did which no one else did they would have no sin but now they have seen and have hated me and my father because it was the father that was working through him and they wouldn't believe they hated Jesus and they hate the father also although they say they love him the father sent Jesus which they hate so they hate the father also they say they do, but they're deceiving themselves. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without cause. And Jesus talks about sending the Holy Spirit again here at the end of this chapter. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Number one thing that the Holy Spirit does is testifies of the works of Jesus Christ. And so, when we come to know Jesus, he brings us to the Father. Remember, I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We come through him. Remember, he's the gate. We enter in through him, and he is the shepherd. He's going to shepherd us along the way to get us to the Father. And so, and you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. And we have not in physical presence, but we have been with Jesus from the beginning of his works because of the written word that we have. And when we meditate on it, it becomes part of our heart like it's become part of the disciples' hearts. And, and the Holy Spirit comes in and dwells within us when we come to love Jesus and keep his commandments. He said he will abide in us and uh, we will bear much fruit. So I pray that you are abiding in the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you are bearing much fruit. And if you're not, that you'll let the Father prune you so that you can begin to bear fruit. And as you're bearing fruit, he'll prune a little more and prune a little more. And he'll take what could be a nearly dead branch that was getting ready to be chopped off and cast into the fire, and he'll make that 
little nub that's left with life in it to be a flourishing branch that is bearing much fruit and that you'll keep that fruit into eternity. That's a wonderful blessing that God has in store for those that love him. I pray that you'll be reading God's word. I pray that you'll be living it out in your life. And I pray that you are blessed to be able to, to uh, meditate on his word. I know that you will be blessed if you do. Let it be part of your heart. And I pray these things for you in Jesus' name. And be blessed. Amen. Good night.